Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a look at the general case of using the completing the square method to solve a quadratic equation. What that means is we're no longer going to assume that a is equal to 1. And if a is not equal to 1, we need to add one additional step. So let's say we have a general equation, general, general quadratic equation. We have ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not necessarily 1. What that means is on the first step, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the numerical coefficient of the x squared term. In other words, we divide the whole equation by a so that we can turn this into a 1. That's the whole idea. We want 1x squared in the front, so we accomplish that by dividing everything by a. So now the equation looks like this. Everything else is the same. The second step, in this case, will now be the second step. We take the constant term, remove it to the right side, so we have minus c over a on the right side. The third step is we're going to take half the coefficient of the middle term, which is b over 2a, and square that and add it to both sides. The next step is to factor the left side, because now we end up with a perfect square on the left side, so we can easily factor that as a single binomial squared. Once we have that, we take the square root of both sides, so now we have x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of the right side. So again, we need a plus or minus because we want to find both solutions if they're there. And then we move the b over 2a term to the right side. Now one more step, algebraically factor out a 2a out of both of the terms. You can make it look like this, and now you should recognize that as the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is derived by using the completing the square method and not assuming that the coefficient a is equal to 1. If it's not equal to a, you can see that we then have the general solution to the quadratic formula or to the quadratic equation, namely the quadratic formula, and we derived it by using the completing the square method and using the general case where a is not equal to 1. So let's apply the method now to this example. So in other words, we can yes indeed use a quadratic formula to solve for x, but we can also use the completing the square method, the general case application, so we go through all of the steps. So the first step would be to divide everything by 4 because 1 turns this into a 1. So step number 1, we divide everything by 4, so we get x squared minus 13 over 4x plus 3 over 4 is equal to 0. So that's step 1. Step 2 is taking the constant term and move it to the right side. So step number 2, end up with x squared minus 13 over 4x is equal to minus 3 over 4. And notice we need to leave some room there because we're going to add something there. What are we adding there? Half the middle term squared, and we add that to both sides of the equation. So step number 3, we have x squared minus 13 over 4x, and then we're going to add to that half of this, which is 13 over 8. Notice it's a negative 13 over 8, but we don't care because we're going to square it anyway. So the negative will disappear, equals minus 3 over 4, plus a negative 13 over 8 quantity squared. We just put the negative there to be consistent with the methodology. All right, the next step then would be to factor the left side. And yeah, let's do that. Now you can say, all right, I don't need to have a negative there. I can make that a positive, it doesn't matter. So step number four, since if we square that, we get a positive number there. So we have x, um, hmm, let's see here. No, we do need a negative because we have a negative here. So negative 13 over eight quantity squared. When we factor it, we do need the negative there because we end up with a negative middle term. So we have no choice, all right? And that would be equal to the right side, which is minus three over four. Uh, plus 13 squared, which is 169, divided by 8 squared, which is 64. So notice that we need to clean up the right side a little bit. We need to write that over a common denominator. So this can be written as uh, 16 times this is 64. That would be minus 48 over 64 plus 169 over 64. So when we do that, we get x minus 13 over 8 quantity squared is equal to minus 48 added to that. That gives us 121 over 64. Now we're ready to take the square root of both sides. That would be the next step, step number five. 
So we end up with x minus 13 over 8 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 121 over 64, which is 11 over 8. Then we can move this to the right side. So we have 6. <clears throat> we have x is equal to positive 13 over 8 plus or minus 11 over 8, which means that gives us the two possible solutions for x. So that means that x is equal to, we take the positive, 13 plus 11 is 24 divided by 8, which is 3, or when we take the negative, x equals 13 minus 11, which is 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth. And that would be a positive as well. So here are the two possible solutions, or the two not possible, but the actual two solutions of our quadratic equation using the completing the square method. Notice that it's very different than simply plugging the numbers into our quadratic formula. Sometimes this is actually easier and faster. Yeah, it depends on the problem we're dealing with. But at least you need to be familiar with this method just in case you get a problem like this on the next test. And that is how it's done.